Howdy, y'all. Hi, guys. It's Ryan. And Angela. From RNA Music. And Bella Monroe. <laughs> we're not from Bella Monroe. No, we're not. Deep in the heart of Canton, Texas, that's where we're yes. at. And we are here to answer your questions about all kinds of things. All kinds of things, mostly guitar things. Mostly well, guitar all things. Kinds of things. <laughs> we answer questions on all kinds. Mm -hmm. Relationships, mm -hmm. Texas barbecue. Yeah, once every four or five. Months. <laughs> All right, well, let's get to the questions. First question, Paul DeJaro, AKA the Bitter Bass Man. <laughs> Hashtag Bitter Bass Man. <laughs> question for Angela. Uh-oh, here we go. Oh, Lord. What is it like, <laughs> what is it like being around musicians all the time? Mm -hmm. Do you ever get sick of the music? Also, what's the worst song you had to perform for the recitals. It's talking about our RNA Music student recitals. Because <laughs> they're students. They're students. students. Um, let's see. What's it like being around musicians all the time? It's good because I enjoy, I don't necessarily enjoy the music aspect of it because um, the sp specifically the musicians I hang around with don't play or want, Real music. want to play music I actually like. So I never really get to sing or perform anything that interests me. Um, so it's it's okay, you know. But I do like the fact that most of them are nerds. So I, if anything, you know, we'll get on a subject about superheroes or movies or TV shows or something. So I actually get to get to talk about things that I actually like. But do I ever get sick of the music? Their music? Yeah. <laughs> it's good music. Yeah, but it's metal is the best. But, but there's ever. no balance. It's always just one type of music. So, and I like all kinds of music. And um, so, yeah, that that kind of gets aggravating after a while. So I don't really hang around too much. I mean, you know that. <laughs> I'm barely ever around. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it's you know, I like the company of the people. You like the I people. Like the mu the music that they listen. But not to. their music. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that could be with anybody, really, honestly. That's true. You like me. Yeah. But and that's all that. It trumps music, music, your music all the time. Um, <laughs> what's the worst song you've had to perform recitals? Honestly, and I have to say this because I read this question before we started. Um, and I jokingly said Green Day, but I honestly have to say Green Day. Um, Why? Any and every Green Day song. Um, only because, not because I don't like Green Day, because I actually do like their music. What? I do. I thought you didn't like... No. Oh. I don't like to sing oh. their music. Um, because my voice just does not fit. And I don't think I have ever or will ever... Unless we change the... Put the words to a different genre. And changed it to fit like a slower genre. Or something more jazzy. That would be fun. But... Try to sing um, high energy rock music. I can't. I'm not good at that. My voice doesn't fit that style of music, and I do not enjoy singing any of their songs because I think it sounds bad. So. I think you sound great when you sing rock tunes. And yeah, I don't. So <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> I, well, I think you're great. <laughs> I, th I don't think I sing bad. I think that my voice doesn't fit their music at all. So I don't like singing their music. I liked it when you sing so. when you sang Metallica. I thought it was the best thing ever. <laughs> yeah, well. I thought it was. Yeah, it was neither here nor there. <laughs> so Green Day is the worst <laughs> song ever to sing at recitals. Yeah. There you go, Paul. Yeah. I like hearing it being performed. I just personally don't like to sing it because I don't think I sound good singing it at all. So. There you go. Thanks for the question, Paul. Next question, Walkin' Dead 1369. That's a pretty good name. Yeah. Walkin', like mm -hmm. Christopher Walken. Sounds like it. Is that his name? Christopher Walken? Yeah. Dead. Mm -hmm. First off, I have recently discovered you, mm -hmm. too. Love it. Well, thank you. <laughs> We're glad you enjoyed it. A lot of really nice uh, compliments this last week. Yeah. People finding us for the first time and really digging our chemistry. Oh. Your chemistry is great. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we like each other. Yeah, it helps. It helps. 
On to the question. I'm sure this has been asked, but I am so new, so please cut me some slack. For each of you, who were your major musical influences? Hmm. Mm -hmm. I think we may have answered that. I'm sure we have. So, we've only got like 180 Ask RNA videos. Yeah. It's always <laughs> been like, what is your fa favorite song? Who's your favorite artist? You know, if you could be stranded on an island, what three people would you bring back to life? We've mm -hmm. had a lot of, we had a lot of questions like that, but yeah, we always have fun sure. answering them again. Who are your major musical influences? Um, I don't know. I've, it's, I don't know. That's a hard, always a hard question for me to ask because I'm not, I was never that person. Like I never bought albums. I never bought, you know, um, if I had CDs, it was because my sisters owned them or a family member owned them or my parents owned them. I personally, um, never really bought albums as a, like as a kid or, you know, even as a teenager. No, never, never, never did. Um, so when iTunes came out as an adult, I really liked it cause I could just buy that one song and not buy the whole album. Cause mm -hmm. every time I bought a whole album, I think I bought like, um, Bruno Mars or something like that. I was always disappointed. So I, because I don't like like sitting and listening to a whole entire album. I've never been that person because my taste changed. So I guess like growing up, maybe that I was just like, oh, I would love to start singing because of this person. It was probably like Stevie Wonder. Um, I love that he had all the different instruments playing with him and I love the sound of his music and the fact that he was blind just blew my mind away. Um, Whitney Houston for a time, but even then I got tired of her songs because it was just like the same song over and over again. So I would get tired, you know, <laughs> that's just, that's just how I am. But, um, yeah, I would say Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder. Yeah. And some Whitney. And some Whitney. Michael Jackson, yeah, but it was not really an influencer for me. I enjoyed listening to it like most people and in our age group, but... He didn't really influence me where I was like, I want to be just like Michael Jackson. What about Barbara Streisand? Yeah, I, like her. I do because she was an actress and, and she did musicals and she sang and she performed and she wrote songs. And so she was like this all around person. Yeah, she influenced, she influenced me quite a bit. She's a pretty good singer. Yeah. She's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Any others? No, that's about it. That's it? Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, I'm with Angela. This is really hard to answer because really there's, there's so many, and it's like we can't spend mm -hmm. the whole video talking about that. Mm -hmm. But um, for me, like when it comes to playing guitar, predominantly as a guitarist, you know, it was probably um, the bands that made me want to play guitar. It's like Guns N' Roses, Metallica, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Pantera, you know, yeah. uh, Alice in Chains, a lot of the grunge stuff. But, uh, you know, kind of typical growing up in the, or being a teenager in the late, late 80s, early 90s, mm -hmm. kind of that, that typical stuff. It was, um, you know, hard rock and metal and grunge. <laughs> but uh, it's funny, they're talking about all those bands, they hated the term grunge. Yeah. They didn't like to be con considered that. But anyways. Yeah. Well, it sounds like an insult. It does. Uh, just like bands that are degent mm -hmm. or gent, they're like, that's stupid. Right. But that's what the public calls it. Mm -hmm. So that's what the public called those guys. Anyways, right. uh, that was my main ones, you know, um, for guitar. For drums, it was, you know, a big uh, John Bonham, Vinnie Paul. Um, trying to think who else. A lot of rock guys. Rock guys. Well, you know, and the, the you know, <laughs> generic answers like Neil Peart from Rush and, you know, some fusion guys. But mm -hmm. um, not, nothing too crazy. Typical stuff for that time period, I guess. Um, I like me some Beethoven though. Like my favorite when it comes to like classical stuff, like I could listen to Beethoven, his piano stuff, his symphonies, like all the time. That was my favorite. I, I like that a lot. Um, modern stuff, I listen to a lot of Jeff Loomis because he's super technical. <laughs> yeah. I don't play like that at all, but uh, I enjoy that a lot too. So it's hard because it changes. Like there was things that were super influential on me, like as a teenager, mm -hmm. and then over the years, your tastes kind of change a little bit. Yeah. And then, you know, you appreciate those things that got you going with music, but 
I don't I don't, but I don't listen to Guns N' Roses now or Metallica a lot or Pantera or you know every now and then it'll come on, but that's not that's not what's on my playlist and my iPod right now. Right. But I would say those were influences back when I was a kid, for sure. Mm -hmm. All right, man. Great question. Thanks, Walking Dead. <laughs> I like that name. Adam Lamar. Why are most sound guys bitter er er bitter er than Paul? <laughs> Why are most sound guys bitter -er than Paul? I wanted to ask for a vid on the new Acacia, but you've already posted one. I sure did. Yep. Why are most sound guys bitter -er than Paul? Yeah. I think because they have they're underappreciated. Kind of. I can see that. And they're they're in the back of the room. They don't usually get any recognition. I'm assuming most of them are musicians. You would you would think you would think or you would hope mm -hmm. some of them at least play some music. But they're not on stage. They're stuck pushing buttons. <laughs> yeah. I guess. I don't know. I don't know a lot of sound guys. And I don't play, you know, Adam plays a lot. Uh, his band, Warefoot, mm -hmm. they play a lot of gigs. And so you come across a lot more sound guys than I do. But the ones I know, the ones that I know are old. <laughs> they might be bitter because they're old, but I don't know. Those are my thoughts. Why don't you tell us why you think they're bitter, Adam? Since you spend a lot more time playing gigs yeah. and clubs and stuff. <laughs> or anybody else, tell me why you think sound guys are bitter. Or are they? Are they? I have no idea. I have no idea either. <laughs> Thanks for the question, Adam. Chivalry218, question. I'm considering a refret. In your opinion, is there a noticeable difference between nickel frets and stainless steel frets? What is your preference and why? Also, despite all has been said, Paul's real middle name is Megatron. <laughs> it's the only name to match his level of bitterness. <laughs> Paul Megatron DeJaro. I think it is now. I think it is now. I like that. Mm -hmm. Megatron. Paul Mega DeJaro. Yeah. Um, you know, most of the guitars that I have and played on all have nickel frets. I only had well, I have I've only had one or two in the store that had stainless steel. They were all they were both Schecters, and um, I think there there was a difference. I don't. It wasn't super noticeable. It was noticeable. I mean, they did felt smoother when you're doing like bendies, the bendies. Mm -hmm. um, but I haven't played one enough to really be like, oh man, this is the best thing ever. Um, and most of my ones with nickel frets, I only have one guitar that's really the frets are pretty wore out on and that's my explorer that i've had since i was a kid and it probably needs a refret but um i have enough guitars that i kind of rotate them around so i never really wear out the frets mm -hmm. but um i like the stainless steel but it's not like a deal breaker for me you're like i gotta have stainless steel or i'm not buying it it's, i'm not like for me it's like it's nice if it happens if they have it but it's not like something to actively go out for um if you're gonna have a refret then it's gonna cost you more money to have a refret stainless steel. It's definitely gonna cost you more money because it's really hard on the tools of the guys doing it, you know. Sometimes you have to buy a new batch of tools just for working with stainless steel frets. Right. And when they're done, their tools are done too sometimes. But uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not I don't have a super preference for it. It's nice, but not it's not a must have for me. What do you guys think? Y'all like stainless steel or no stainless steel? Or do you care? Do you care? No, not really. <laughs> Next question. Uh, coffee Waldo. Coffee Waldo. I think he likes coffee. Probably. Have you guys ever seen Brian Moore guitars, especially the custom shop Super Strats? I think I may have seen those like at a guitar show, like, you know, Dallas Guitar Show or the... Uh, Nam, something like that. Hmm. I don't think I've ever picked one up and played it. I remember them being, you know, they're looking quite nice and being, you know, a little pricey. <laughs> but uh, I'm not a super strat strat player guy anyway, so, you know, it's not one that I would go, oh, I'm going to go play that because I love strats. But they seem really nice. I've, I've not ever really heard anything negative about them personally. So if any of you guys have experience with them, why don't y'all share it in the comment section? Thanks, Coffee Waldo. Next question. Flipside music. I know a guy. <laughs> Hi, Ike. How are you, man? 
I like that video you just put up a couple of days ago. Oh, wait. There was no video. You should make videos, I. Right? Mm -hmm. Angela, what's the strangest request you've had for caps at Lolly's Loops? Oh, goodness. Uh, quite a few strange requests. Um, I've had... Well, not caps. Well, there's one. Somebody asked me to make um, this fish... Fish cat behind coasters it looked like with a little anus on it so it looks like cat behinds um a cat's butt yes oh okay i was like what are you a cat behind what are a you? cat behind yes a cat's and, booty and um <laughs> i had coasters but a beanie or a hat a toboggan wherever you're from um i think the oddest was probably for a mom who was breastfeeding and she wanted a breast beanie to put on her child while she's breastfeeding so um somebody you know. asked for that mm -hmm. did you make it they ended up not not <laughs> wanting it i don't um, remember later. that yeah i got a request for that and they asked how much and i quoted them a price and they didn't they didn't go through with it but yeah i got a request that's a request so asking asking how much because that's a thing um because the big uproar of women breastfeeding in public and people being like oh my gosh that's so nasty and so women were like, okay, well, I'll cover him up. <laughs> but he'll, when he tilts his head to the side on the back of his head, it'll look like a giant breast, you know? So I've had that. And probably the next would be your turkey, turkey hat. <laughs> <laughs> or the Viking helmets, you know, a Dallas Cowboy Viking helmet. Um, Viking helmets. I'm trying to think of what else. Uh, troll hair hats people have asked me for those um i think that's about it yeah but yeah not so many weird hats um dolls people have asked for different dolls because i crochet dolls and so i've had a lot of weird requests for like that. the joker well the joker the predator um to see if i could do alien and predator crochet dolls um the cast of Big Bang Theory, the Golden Girls, <laughs> um, just all kinds of stuff. People ask for different dolls, so that's that's interesting. Scooby-Doo gang and their van. They've asked me to <laughs> do that. Crochet van. Yeah, and people don't understand the kind of detail work, and especially to make it look not so big and fluffy and actually do some miniature fingers and... You know their different brows so you can know and the shape of their face and and ears and actually detail face you're sculpting something out of yarn and so i'm like yes i can totally do that for four hundred dollars yeah you that's know a sick like of like work. a nativity scene that's been a big thing and so i'm like yeah for 200 bucks i'll i'll do that because that's a lot of work <laughs> you're, you're asking me to take a, a lump of string and turn it into people <laughs> it's it takes a lot of time and so but yeah i think for cap wise would be the breast cap and the turkey cooked thanksgiving turkey hat he's yeah. probably gonna want a breast hat now. i'm sure <laughs> yeah i'm sure a lot of guys will but i will not make it for adults no. toddler size only <laughs> toddler size <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> i don't remember that you must not have mm -hmm. told me about that one it was a private yeah. request so who wanted it Never mind. A friend. Don't tell me. <laughs> I don't want to know. Yeah. Thanks, Ike. Thanks for the question, man. Next question. Earl Darehart13. Mm -hmm. Great channel, you guys. I took my 2012 R61 reissue SG to shop for fret, job, and setup. My guy put some scratches in the back of the neck. Will it devalue the guitar to have the finish repaired, or does the defect devalue it more? Thanks. Much, Lee. Take care. Ah, so you had some work done on your guitar, and they scratched the back of the neck. Um, I don't think... I think having it repaired will be better than not having it repaired. Mm -hmm. um, as far as how much it devalues it, it just depends. If it's a really big scratch, or is it just a light one? Mm -hmm. You know... It, it, it kind of depends. But I would say, um, you know, if you had it repaired, people would never know that it was, if you had it done well, no people would never know that it was scratched in the first place. So it'd right. be like new. I know some guys here in Texas that do work um, that's just 
phenomenal. I was there. They had an SG. I think it was an Epiphone. I think it was an Epiphone that uh, I was looking at. I'm like, wow, this looks great. We're like, oh yeah, the neck was broken in three places. I mean, the neck was literally in three pieces. And they put it back together and painted it and finished it. And it was like, you would, you would never know. I was like, it looks actually better than it did before. So, mm. you know, I think if you want to maintain the value, having it fixed would be great. Now, is the cost, the amount it's going to take price-wise to fix it, you know, if, it, if it's a $250 fix, you know, but you're not going to, you're not going to get that $250 back in value, you know what I mean? Because a used guitar is never as good as a brand new one, price-wise. So is it what it's going to cost to fix it? Going to be worth the offset and value? You know, you just kind of got to do the math on that yourself. And, you know, depends if they do a good job or not. But if it bothers you, and you're planning on keeping the guitar for a long time, I would probably, you can have that fixed. Pretty much anything can be fixed on a guitar, I've learned. It just depends on how much are you willing to pay. Anything can be crocheted. How much are you willing to pay right. <laughs> to have that done? Thanks, Earl Dearheart. <laughs> Next question, Terry Starks. Hey, Terry. How are you, man? Hope you're doing well. Um, it's a long comment. Let me get to the question. It says, my question is, uh, and back a long time ago when you started out and only had a beardlet, <laughs> you used to put out some instructional videos. Have you thought about offering lessons on video uh, on video or in packages like Robert Baker does? I'm a three year beginner and can't find anything on YouTube, etc. that takes us seriously. I watched that this is how you hold a pick, this is how you tune stuff, but still can't play a song. I practice fingering up and down the fretboard and scales that I picked up, but I want some cohesive lessons with a plan and purpose. Thanks, I have sworn. I would have sworn his middle name was Hercules. Sorry about Paul's Millie. Hercules. Yep. Um, yeah, you know what? I did, back when we first started the store and I started the YouTube channel, I, had, I did a lot more instructional type things. I had a whole series on how to play all five pentatonic scales, how to play all seven positions of your diatonic scale. And so that works no matter where you're at. And you can start on any note. And if you play whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, you've got a major scale. So here I'm going to start on the... Well, let's start on a um, start on an F on the fourth string. Whole, whole, half, whole. Um, I did a lot more of that back then, and I've been intending for years now to go back and do more instructional stuff. And I just really haven't found the time to do it. That's actually even more time consuming than kind of the videos um, that we normally do. Uh, but I have thought about doing and I actually have, yes, considered doing um, lesson plans that you could, you know, purchase. Like on our website, you could download, you know, lesson pack for, you know, 20 bucks or whatever or 15 bucks or I don't know what. But I have considered doing that and that is on my long term, medium term goals to have some lesson um, plans that you could purchase. Of course, we'll do stuff for free on YouTube, mm -hmm. but you know, more in-depth things um, be available for purchase. I've just got to find the time to sit down and write the curriculum and record that and do that. So I do have plans for it. I have been thinking a lot lately about doing more instructional style videos. Mm -hmm. I just got to chisel out the time to do it. But now that I know, you know, more people want that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. I'm a lot more motivated to do it. And I think you're right that there is, there's a whole demographic of uh, guys, like not kids, not 12 year olds, but adults who are kind of starting their guitar journey. And I think they're having trouble finding uh, lessons that kind of address their particular situations. Yeah. And I'm finding that more and more. I've had quite a few guys, uh, especially in like their 50s and 60s, coming in, um, and 40s, 40s, 50s, and 60s coming in like, want to learn to play guitar. Mm -hmm. Played a little bit when they were kids, but then never, never took off and got busy with life, and now they're coming back and they want to do it. So yeah. uh, I do have plans for that, Terry. So if you guys are interested in those kind of things, why don't you leave a comment below about what kind of stuff you would like to learn? Um, mm -hmm. that, would, that would be helpful, you know, for organizing 
you know, a lesson plan of some kind. Yeah, leave me a comment about the things you're most interested in learning and what kind of educational videos you would like to see. And we'll see what we can do. Thanks, Terry. Thanks. Final question. The Hank Rots Project. Hey man, I'm liking the RNA hoodie Angela's wearing. How much? <laughs> well, she was wearing that last week. Yes. Um, and I think, how much What were those? 33. 33 bucks. Um, for ones we had here in the store. Mm -hmm. um, and we only have a couple of black ones left here in the shop. Now what you can do is go to our Teespring store and that link is in the description of this video. And on the Teespring, we have t-shirts. We have black t-shirts with, you know, white letters. We have different color t-shirts with white graphics. Mm -hmm. and there's also hoodies on there that you can purchase. And I found that Teespring to be great um, for being able to have sizes because everybody's a different size. You know, we've had people who want 5X, we have people who want smalls, we have people who need three and four X. And for us to try to keep a couple of every different size possible <clears throat> and all the different colors, you know, here on hand is, you know, very taxing mm -hmm. financially for us to do that. And so I'm really liking Teespring because they're able to fulfill those things for people. So if you're interested in some swag, t-shirts or hoodies, go check out the Teespring store. Now from time to time, we will do probably prints with our local printer uh, here in town because we like to, we do like to have stuff on hand when people come in, they drive from wherever, all over. Where's the last time somebody drove from? Oh my goodness, I, um, Ohio, I think. Yeah, the people come from a long way sometimes. If they're coming through Texas, they stop in and see us and that's, that's pretty awesome. So we like to have some things on hand here. Mm -hmm. But for the best uh, selection and sizing, go check out our Teespring. Thanks, Hank Rotz Project. <laughs> That's an interesting name, man. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you guys so much for all your questions. It's been great. We've really uh, been enjoying the R Ask RNA videos a lot lately, and they've been going really well. Yep. I'm really happy with uh, how things are progressing. Mm -hmm. And we appreciate all the comments. There were a lot of comments last week. Yes. Um, so I like to go through and try to read all the comments and respond and then of course several questions. So thank you guys so much. If you have a question for next week, please leave it below and we will try to answer it as best we can and we will see you next time. Keep the music alive. Don't forget it. Music needs you. And you need the music. And we need the music. Yeah. With no bitterness. None. Maybe a little bitterness. No. Maybe some bass. Maybe a little bass player. We need some bass players. See you guys next time. Bye. You're thinking about dinner. I have a lasagna. Do what? I bought a lasagna and some garlic, garlic bread knots. <laughs>